With over 34 years of professional speaking around the world, Jim Cathcart is one of the best-known and most award-winning motivational speakers in the business. He has delivered more than 2,700 presentations around the world. In addition to being a Hall of Fame professional speaker, he is a best author and one of the country's leading executive coaches. In 2007, he was listed as one of the top 100 minds of personal development by Leadership Excellence Magazine. He has served on the advisory board of the School of Business at both Pepperdine University and California Lutheran University. Please welcome the CEO and founder of Cathcart Institute Incorporated, Jim Cathcart. Take a moment and soak it in. Feel what's here in this room. Look around you, look up, look behind you, look beside you. Just look around and take it in. You just heard that I've delivered 2,700 speeches over my 34 years of speaking. I gotta tell you, this is the number one most motivated audience I've ever addressed. Number one, absolutely. Woo. When, the, when the world looks at top athletes, they often comment on how motivated they are. Well, I've studied motivation for over 34 years, and what I've learned is everybody has motives. But what separates the winners from the rest of the crowd is that they act on their motives. They develop the discipline. They take the time and do the actual work to become their best. And today we're going to meet some of the most motivated athletes in the world, individuals who have made the commitment to do more than other people thought they could. Everyone needs a vehicle for self-development and an avenue for self-expression in order to succeed. For these athletes, sports is that vehicle, and Special Olympics is the avenue. Like you, I am very proud to be part of this wonderful event. Let's meet some of these great people. Christopher was not your typical child. It wasn't until the age of four that Christopher was able to speak and communicate but that never stopped Christopher from expressing his emotions and unique abilities. Christopher was six years old when uh, we, we first had him start swimming at the local YMCA. We would swim every Saturday morning and every Wednesday afternoon meets, and then we'd practice every evening. And he just got better and better. When Christopher was old enough to participate in the Special Olympics, there was no team in his immediate area. So Christopher and his family would drive miles to compete. But his older brother Kevin was also one of the coaches there on this team. And um, after the second year, his, uh, Kevin just said, Mom, why are we driving 45 minutes to an hour to get to, get to the pool? Why don't we just start our own team here at, at our local Y? I think we started with just us three as coaches. And uh, we had maybe 12 swimmers, I think, 12 or 13 swimmers. And I think we're now, I think we're the largest team in the state. My two brothers, Matt and Kevin, they uh, taught me how to do flip turns and some different strokes. Christopher was helping the community learn about how sport could provide a vehicle to create a level field for competition and participation. But it didn't stop there. Swimming was just beginning to showcase Christopher's ability. When he's on that Marlin team, he's on that special needs team, and he's a practice, he's their role model because he's such a fantastic swimmer. Yeah, I did teach the Marlins and I was their team leader. Today, the Marlins have 42 swimmers and a long waiting list of community members wanting to volunteer to help support the team. And I think part of the reason why they volunteer their time is through because of Christopher, because they know Christopher and they realize, hey, he's a pretty cool kid. Uh, I think it's great because, you know, we kind of set an example and then people kind of followed it. Not only followed it, but went a step above to become special needs teachers as well. Christopher also tried out for the competitive swim team at his local Y. He didn't make it, but he never quit. He kept practicing, and three years later, a new coach welcomed him. 
was a little nervous at first, but um, honestly, you know, from day one, I treated him like any other swimmer on the team, and he's responded like any other swimmer on the team. He said he made the team on his own. He's good enough to swim with everyone else. He's going to be on the team. I do see Christopher as a unifier because, um, you know, like Chris has a lot to deal with, um, and he never complains. It's inspiration to coach and, and to watch, and I think that feeds off on our other swimmers and uh, really helps his team be what it is. Christopher's biggest challenge came in 2007. Swimming in high school was awesome. At first I was a little concerned because I've never coached anyone with special needs, so to me it was going to be something new. Um, I was a little nervous and a little bit hesitant, but as soon as I met Christopher and he started swimming for us, my mind was definitely at peace. Christopher um, has excelled tremendously. I mean, he has come from getting fifth, fourth places in events, to getting first and second places, to swimming all different types of events. He really did well over the past four years. Christopher has become more than just a good swimmer. He played clarinet in the marching band, recently attended his second prom. My day was Larissa, and not to mention she is in my band class, and she plays the flute. It was a lot of fun. I dance a lot. And graduated with his classmates from high school. Today, Christopher is not your typical kid. He is a great role model. And his effect on people reaches far beyond the pool. Like any success story, Christopher needed his vehicle to achieve his potential. Swimming gave Christopher that chance. And not only has he benefited, but it helped show the entire community what can happen when we open ourselves to the possibilities.